like a Lucid Reviews logo? If you do, then you might want to buy a t-shirt with the channel's logo. Just head to geekygoodies.com slash Reviews and grab a t-shirt for yourself or your friends. By buying Lucid Reviews t-shirts, you are supporting the channel, and I'm thankful for that. And don't forget that you can also support the channel through Patreon. Just head to patreon.com slash Reviews and choose the reward level that suits you best. Your support means a lot. With enough support, this channel will continue providing you with the content and you will be able to contribute to that as well. Thank you to everyone who watches and supports the channel. So, my name is Duncan. I commission all the board and card games for Osprey Games. Yeah. And this is Cryptid, which is coming out in September, which is great. Yeah. Uh, Cryptid is a deduction game where we all play as cryptozoologists. And we're all hunting for a particular monster somewhere in the land, wilds of North America here. We all have one piece of information about the monster's habitat. And what we'll be doing over the course of the game is to try to puzzle out what other players' clues are while revealing as little information about our own clue as possible. So you never lie, but you can imply that your clue is different than it might be. So at the start of the game, we're going to draw one of these cards. That'll give you a randomized map setup with these six tiles and these structures. And then you flip the card over, choose your player count, and that will give you which clues in which clue books you should refer to for the course of the game. So, in this one, we're going to be using the red, the brown, and the purple. Purple, be brown, and you can be red. These contain the same number of clues, but the order is randomized. So, you, you will be looking for clue number 61, which you'll need to keep secret from the others. You're looking for clue number 49, and you're looking for clue number 21, okay? That combination of this board layout and those three clues mean there is only one space on the board where the cryptid can possibly be hiding. The way the game works, on an average turn, you're going to be doing one of two things. You're going to be questioning or searching, and they're super, super, super simple. The question, you're just going to take this little pawn, place it somewhere on the board, pick another player and just go, according to your clue, could the cryptid be there? And they will either place a disc, which is a yes, according to my clue, or they'll place a cube, which is no. If anybody places a cube on your turn, that's quite a lot of information, so you also have to place one of your own cubes somewhere on the board. But because you're placing it, you get to decide where it goes, so long as it's correct. So for example, if I already had two cubes here, I could place another cube here, for example, to imply that my clue is related to the mountains or related to being close to water, when in fact my clue might actually be it has to be near a triangular structure, for example. You follow? So you're never lying, but you're trying to imply something other than what it is to try and throw people off. Exactly. Um, the other option then is to search. If you think you have a good idea of where it might be and think you might have puzzled out everybody else's clues, you can search by placing one of your own discs on the board and then play will go around clockwise with everybody either adding another disc or adding a cube. As soon as one player adds a cube, you stop the search and you have to add one of your own again. But if everybody adds a disc, you've correctly found the cryptid's hideout and you win the game. So it sounds a little complex in setup and kind of learning the clues, but the actual minute-to-minute -minute gameplay is super, super, super straightforward. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.